So what's the first pinch hit home run that pops into your head? Maybe it's David Bodie's unbelievable walk-off pinch hit grand slam against the Nationals. Or Kirk Gibson's legendary walk-off against Hall of Famer Dennis Eckersley in Game 1 of the 1988 World Series. If you're a Phillies fan, you probably thought of this moonshot against the Dodgers. Stairs rips one into the night, deep into right, way out of here. This is Matt Stairs. He built an entire career off of being a reliable power bat off the bench. And this particular home run is responsible for one of the best t-shirts in MLB history. Stairs' path to that moment was a long one. He grew up in St. John, New Brunswick, Canada. In addition to baseball, he also played hockey. In 1988, he played for the Canadian national team during the Summer Olympics in Seoul, South Korea, as well as the Baseball World Cup, where he was named the tournament's top shortstop. Yeah, you heard that right. This guy was a shortstop. After a strong showing, he signed as an international free agent with the Montreal Expos in 1989. In 1991, he put together an excellent season in AA, hitting 333, 411, 509. He even displayed some decent wheels by hitting 10 triples and stealing 23 bases. He finally got sent up for a cup of coffee in 1992, where someone with some common sense took one look at him and said, this dude is not an infielder. And after just 13 games, he was sent down to AAA. In 93, the now 25-year-old Stairs only plays six games for the Expos before signing with the Chunichi Dragons and becoming the first Canadian ball player to ever play in Japan. And somewhere along the way, he gained the nickname Wonder Hamster, a reference to the Weird Al song. Harvey, Harvey, Harvey the Wonder Hamster. Then, in 94, his contract gets purchased by Boston, and in 95, he's in the majors for just 39 games. In 1996, he's considering retiring from baseball and attending open hockey tryouts, before finally catching his big break after signing with the Oakland Athletics. It's fitting that Oakland is where he finally gets a chance to show that he belongs. While the A's use of advanced analytics became common knowledge with the release of the book Moneyball in 2003, Sandy Alderson, the general manager when Stairs was signed, was an early adopter. Stairs exhibited a strong on-base percentage, and nearly half of his hits went for extra bases. He was the exact type of player that had been undervalued. He became an everyday player for the majority of his four and a half seasons in Oakland, averaging approximately 30 home runs per season while hitting 268, 363, 509. His best season came in 1999, when he smashed 38 dingers and finished 17th in MVP voting. He was traded to the Cubs in 2001 to shed payroll, and his days as an everyday player were over. He would never have 500 plate appearances again in a season. Stairs bounced around the league as a role player and pinch hitter for the next 10 years, spending time with the Brewers, Pirates, Royals, Rangers, Tigers, Blue Jays, Phillies, Padres, and Nationals. That's 12 total teams for those of you keeping count. A record for any position player. His knack for clutch hitting would earn him one of the greatest nicknames a player could receive, the professional hitter. He became well known for his pinch hitting prowess. In 490 plate appearances as a pinch hitter, he slashed 252, 357, 476, hitting 23 pinch hit home runs, the all-time record. Stairs retired in 2011 at the age of 43 being fondly remembered as one of the greatest pinch hitters of all time. But could he have been more? I mean, he didn't get a real shot until he was almost 30 and had more than 500 plate appearances in just three seasons. But I get the feeling he was a much better hitter than he gets credit for. And I'm not alone in this. Bill James, one of the pioneers of sabermetrics, had this to say about Matt Stairs. Look at it. Somebody decided he was a second baseman. He tears through the minor leagues, gets to Montreal, the Expos take one look at him and say, he's no second baseman, get real. He bounces around, goes to Japan, doesn't really get the chance to play until he's almost 30, then hits 38 homers, slips into a part-time role, and hits 15 to 20 every year for 10 years in about 250 at-bats a season. 
you put him in the right park, right position early in his career, and he's going to hit a lot of bombs. And sports writer Joe Pitznanski featured Stairs in an article entitled The Hall of Could Have Been, where he contends Stairs could have had a shot at the Hall of Fame had he gotten the playing time. So I've attempted to project what Stairs' career could have looked like with the proper playing time, and looking at his actual stats, I'm cautiously optimistic. I'll be the first to admit that there's plenty of information missing that we'll have to project, but in my opinion, we may just have the most important information. We can already see that he was able to be a productive player until he turned 40, and the vast majority of Hall of Fame cases are cemented by the ability to perform well in your 30s. Let's start off with his actual career stats. As you can see, he clubbed a respectable 265 home runs and nearly 300 doubles to the tune of a 262 batting average, a 356 on base percentage, and a 477 slugging percentage. That's a really solid career. Now let me explain how I projected what his career could have looked like. I used his actual stats as a baseline, and next I went to his advanced stats to give us a little more information than just the counting stats. I looked up what percentage of his plate appearances ended in a walk, a strikeout, extra base hit, or a home run each season. For games played, I tried to give him a realistic number of games, while being conservative enough throughout his entire career to accommodate any DL stints that could arise. And finally, I use this chart from Fangraphs to view how many plate appearances each spot in the order averages per game. Stair spent the majority of his plate appearances batting cleanup, followed closely by fifth. But I chose 4.2, which is right in between fifth and sixth in the order, in case he'd be pulled for a defensive replacement or occasionally bat lower. I kept it simple and used his batting average for each season. He still gets called up at 24, but this time he gets a legit shot and sticks to a big league roster. And here are the results. If he were to perform exactly to these projections, I think that's a really solid Hall of Fame career. He'd be just the 14th person to ever have 500 home runs and 500 doubles. Couple that with nearly 2,600 career hits, and I'd say he'd have a really strong case on the counting stats. Even if you're not convinced Matt Stairs could have been a Hall of Famer, I hope after watching this you have a newfound appreciation for just how cool his story is. And in case you're wondering, Stairs never lost his love for hockey. Between the 2009 and 2010 seasons, Stairs played senior league hockey, and since retiring he's taken up coaching high school hockey when he's not working as a hitting coach or in the broadcast booth. So what do you think? Do you agree? Feel free to share any comments, critiques, or ideas for a future video. I'll leave you guys with one final Matt Stairs quote. Swing like you live. Hard.